Okay, in this video I'm just going to do some more calculus uh, questions. And this is question number three. And what question three says, it says if you've got the function f of x equals 3x squared plus x <coughs> over 3x squared minus x, then the derivative is equal to what? So basically I calculate the derivative problem. Um, lots of derivatives on this test. The easiest thing to do whenever you have a derivative problem is first ask yourself, can I simplify down the function? It'll usually make the derivative much easier to do. Well, notice in the numerator, there's an x, uh, there's x's in both terms, so I can simply factor an x out. And then I would need, well, 3x plus 1 left over. Likewise, I can factor an x out of the bottom and have 3x minus 1 left over. Then I can just cancel out the x's. So really, I'm just taking the derivative of the function 3x plus 1, 3x minus 1. And I think it'll just make the computations much easier. So now we just have to remember the quotient rule. So let's see. So the quotient rule in this case is going to be, so remember the derivative of a fraction. It says you get the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom part squared just to remind you of the quotient rule, so I'm going to erase it and give myself some space to do this problem. So if you need to, rewind and jot it down real quick. So it says you get the bottom times the derivative of the top. Well, the, the derivative of 3x is just 3, the 1 goes away, minus the top, 3x plus 1, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 3. It says we take all of the denominator and square it. So now all we have to do is simplify the numerator um, and see if anything cancels out. So let's see, when we simplify, we'll get, we have to distribute the 3 to both terms. So we'll get 9x minus 3. On the right side, um, we'll get 3x and 3, which is 9x, but we have a negative, so minus 9x. And then it looks like we get a minus let's see, a minus 1. My arithmetic all okay here? Okay, so let's see what happens. Can I multiply? Oh my goodness, now I see. <clears throat> took me a second. I knew something was wrong here. I could just feel it. So 3x and 3 is negative 9x. Um, 1 and 3 is going to be 3, but it's going to be negative 3. Okay, sorry about that, see? Okay, and then we still have the denominator being squared, which was 3x minus 1 squared. So now simply if we, if we simplify the numerator, the 9x and the 9x will cancel. Negative 3 and negative 3 is negative 6 over 3x minus 1 squared. That's the good thing about multiple choice is I was looking at the solution and saw clearly something was wrong. Okay, just a little arithmetic mistake. So I could delete this video and remake it, but <clears throat> it illustrates use the solutions to your advantage, right? So, all right, lesson learned, hopefully. It happens to the best of us. Okay, number four, it says if the function f is continuous so if the function f is continuous for all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, it says, and if f of x equals x squared minus 7x plus 12 over x minus 4, um, when x does not equal 4, it says then the value of f of 4 equals what? Okay, so the function's continuous. They've given us a formula for all values except 4. So how can we figure out the value at 4 without a formula? Well, the, the point is they tell us that f is continuous. So remember the definition of continuity. If f is continuous at a point A, if it's continuous at a point A, it fulfills the, the definition. The limit as x approaches A of f of x equals f of a. Okay, so that's what it means to be continuous at a point a, but since the function's continuous everywhere, in particular, it's continuous at the value of a equals 4. 
So it says to figure out the value of f of 4, actually we can just simply compute the limit as x approaches 4 of the function. Well, here's my function. Our function is x squared minus 7x plus 12 for x not equal to 4. Well, it says that's what we need to take the limit as x approaches 4 of. So it says if I take the limit of this, I will now know the value of f of 4. So to summarize, they basically are saying calculate a limit. Calculate the limit of that function as x approaches 4. This is a very common type of limit problem. We would like to simply plug in the value 4, but again you get 0 in the denominator, which makes it undefined. Um, typically when you have a quadratic equation on top, it'll factor. So without even thinking, I would think, well, there's got to be an x minus 4 in the numerator. Well, negative 4 times what is uh, going to give us positive 12? I would need negative 3. And yeah, hey, that gives us negative 7, so that's the correct factorization of the numerator. The x minus 4, x minus 4 cancel. We'll s we're just left with the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 3. Um, if we plug in our value, we get 4 minus 3, or simply the number 1. Okay, so that was question number four, and you would say in this case the value of f of four equals one based on the definition of continuity. So, all right, that's the last of those two. I'm going to do five and six in another one, so it should be right around wherever you found this one.